witnessed. Russia's assessment of the cause of the Syrian unrest points the finger of blame firmly at an armed opposition. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also says it's time now to stop dealing in ultimatums and get back to peace talks. A UN investigation earlier stated that Syrian forces had committed crimes against humanity in their brutal treatment of anti-government demonstrators. Almost 4,000 people have been killed after months of unrest. The EU, meantime, is tightening the economic screws on the Syrian regime and it's considering now an arms embargo, something that Moscow strongly Opposes. Let's get up to speed on this one with Peter R. Get his thoughts. He's a Middle East consultant. He's on the line from Birmingham, the UK. Peter, very good to see you tonight. Uh, do you believe these further sanctions that are being talked about are much of a help from the Western states to end what we're seeing, this ongoing violence in Syria? No, certainly not. I feel any sanctions that are imposed, obviously the people of Syria are the ultimate victims, but uh, I don't think it's going to alter uh, what is panning out in Syria at the moment. Uh, what, what we have here is uh, the ultimate, uh, the, the uh, uh, sort of tip of the iceberg on the uh, Arab Spring, uh, which is over-influenced by a Western infiltrating into Syria. So when the uh, International Court of Justice or the UN or Geneva start pointing fingers at the regime uh, within Syria, they've got to understand that a lot of that trouble is, is flared up from the western side. We, we know now that the French are training the militia both on the Turkey side of the border and also in Lebanon. Um, so they're very much involved and, and they're just intimidating the situation. A lot of people who are being killed are actually being killed by special forces, CIA, Mossad or whatever. So what you see, uh, what you hear uh, is really, it's like a Shakespearean play. Uh, the actors are Obama, Cameron, Sarkozy, Clinton and William Hague, who are very bad at uh, play acting. And the truth really is coming out through stations like yourself, uh, Press TV and, and Al Jazeera, whatever. Why would we have to go to the, to the Middle East to, to learn the truth? This, this is all a false charade. Well, picking up on what you're saying there and reiterating um, Russia's uh, view that, that the armed opposition is mostly behind the unrest. So if that's the case, why do you think Europe and the US is focusing solely on the Assad regime? It's, a, it's again, as you're saying, it's a skewed way of looking at it, isn't it? Well, you, uh, as I said on your program once before and, and on other programs, you've got to understand that this, uh, this crisis was planned back in 97 by Paul Wolfovich and it was uh, carried on again after 9-11 uh, when uh, General Clark, the ex-Supreme Commander in uh, NATO Europe, uh, actually was privy to a very confidential document that said the uh, Pentagon, the US military, were going to take over seven countries. Syria was part of that uh, plan, and that is panning out now. You've got to understand that the uh, Cold War has never finished, uh, the Crusades have never finished, and, and so much for the Arab League. You, you talk about uh, the union of, of the Islam movement, they're supposed to be brothers and sisters. They turn their back on the, their counterparts in the Balkans, they turn their backs on Iraq, Afghanistan, in 2006 Lebanon, in Gaza 2008 and 9, and totally turn their back on Libya. They're doing the same game again. You've got to understand the, uh, the Arab League is, is a puppet to America, a puppet to the United Nations, all being a puppet of the New World Order. Is it too late for talk then? I mean, uh, Russia's reiterated calls again for Syria to, to, to have dialogue and reforms. Is that too late? I think it is. Uh, it's like the Palestinian-Israel situation. You've got to understand as well that at the top of all this is, is a very strong Zionist uh, implication uh, who control the politics of America, uh, in the UK and in Europe. And, and they are actually playing the cards because it's those people that fund the politicians. So it's going to be a one-sided game. I think we're beyond dialogue and it's obviously showing exactly the same trend as Libya. The French are on about forming a humanitarian corridor. You've heard all this before, now war crimes. What about the war crimes from the West of, of blasting Libya and all these other countries with depleted uranium, killing a million people in Iraq? Come on, uh, where's this going to end? Peter, it's a complicated and troubling picture you paint there. Middle East consultant as you are talking to us, bringing us your thoughts from Birmingham. Thanks for being on the programme. Thank you, Ken.